Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on What Does the Bible Say? Today, we will explore the topic of peer pressure. Why do we fear face peer pressure? The Bible clearly tells us that we should not expect our lives to look like the lives of other people, unbelievers in this world. As Christians, we are aliens and strangers here on earth, and this world is not our home. 1 Peter 2.11, just as Christ is and was rejected by so many who want to live their lives on their own ungodly way, we will also find the same types of people despising us for our faith. In the first chapter of 1 Thessalonians, Paul speaks of how we are to know we are Christians. One of the points he emphasizes, 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, is the fact that we should have joy despite suffering. We should expect to encounter trials and persecution as Christians, yet be comforted with the fact that God is in control and will repay any wrongs that are committed against us. In 2 Thessalonians, Paul talks about the troubles this church was continuing to face. He told them that when Christ returns and God judges the world, God will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 and 7. Although many Christians will never face suffering as extreme as the Thessalonians did, or even those living in modern day third world countries who are killed for their faith, we still smuff, suffer in smaller ways, such as the torture of peer pressure. What does the Bible say about dealing with peer pressure? The Bible uses never uses these words. But it does tell us how we should deal with the many trials we will face in our lives, especially those involving unbelievers. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and improve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What does that mean in a nutshell? It means that when we are transformed through the reading of the word. The reading of the word is the renewing of your mind. And right here, I have the Life Recovery Bible. It is a godsend for people who struggle with addiction, and it is also a godsend for those who haven't struggled with addiction, but struggle with life in general. Because it notice, it doesn't say drug and alcohol recovery Bible. It says life recovery. It is for everyone who suffers and struggles in this life, because everyone can use the gospel. Let's continue. Romans 12, 14 through 16 says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Basically, don't be prideful just because you're a Christian, because let's be honest, you being a Christian means that you recognize how bad you were and how good God is. Because if you're a Christian, you realize, and I mean a born-again true Christian, because in this day and age, there are a lot of people that call themselves Christians that are still living like hell and still going to church on Sunday and then going out to the bars or whatever on Monday. And it's like, seriously, that it? <laughs> Christ didn't call us to a double-minded life. And so we have to be very careful and very self-vigilant that we don't get prideful in our faith. <sighs> Bless and do not curse. Watch your words. I'll be talking more about this in a future video. I have it planned. But watch the way that you speak. The way that you speak is very, very important because the Bible says that the power of life and death are in the tongue. The powers of life and death are in the words that we speak to one another. You can see it all the time with bullying in schools where children are pushed to the edge and finally just decide to give up on life or they go and they do something horrible and they, they commit acts of violence against a whole school just because of a few, a handful of people that tormented them. Words have power and more so these days than ever before because we have so many different ways to communicate. We have to watch our words. First Peter 1, 13 through 21 says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you 
when Christ Jesus is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who is called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Let me stop right there. Let me stop right there. Okay. In one translation, it says, be holy as your father in heaven is holy. But if we take out the word holy, because holy to us means perfect. Oh, I got to be perfect? Well, I'll never measure up to that. No, no, no. Let's take out the word holy. Be as your father in heaven is, right? Okay. Be as God is. Who is God? Jesus. How did Jesus act? A sinless life. Okay. He's the template for how we should try to act every day. We may not succeed, but if we can come closer to that picture, we can be a better witness for Christ. Let's, let's continue. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of this world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. We were bought with a price and it was greater than any amount of money in the world. Greater than all the amount of money in the world. Honestly, our lives were bought with a price of a life. And not just any life, but the perfect life and the only one in existence. That's a pretty high price. I'll tell you that much. That is a pretty high price and no one else can match that because no one else is sinless, not one. The Bible also tells us that we can trust that God will work all things together for the good of his children. In certain translation, it says, for the good of those who love him, because if we love him, we are his children. That's Romans 8.28. However, the Bible does not promise us an easy life, but a life that glorifies God as we learn lessons that are difficult and overcome attacks from Satan that would be impossible to overcome without God. We are being conformed to the likeness of Christ as God changes us through all our life. Romans 8, 29 and 30. Be comforted that Christ himself was tempted in every way we have been. He understands the difficulty. Yet the Bible promises us that God will provide a way of escape from every trial. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Put your complete trust and faith in God. Let him alone be your strength and your guide. Peer pressure will be a fleeting thing in our lives. Peer pressure is largely about insecurity and a desire for acceptance for all involved. Most people eventually realize that intimidating others to feel important is manipulative and immature. Those who have been followers will usually realize it is more important to make their own decisions and be their own person than to be controlled by someone else. We must not give in to peer pressure, whatever the situation. Standing up for what we believe and what the Bible teaches us will please God. Throughout history, those who have been unafraid to stand on unpopular beliefs have been the ones to change the world and make things happen. Look at Isaac Newton. He proved that, ga that gravity was real. And then look at Galileo. He discovered that the earth was round and not flat. People hated him for centuries until they finally admitted he was right. But it's just that... That simple matter that you might not be the most popular person in the crowd, but guess what? It doesn't matter as long as you're standing on the truth. Stand on the word of God. There is so much in this world that we need to change and so many people who need to be told about Christ. Letting other people decide what we do and how we behave is exactly what Satan hopes we will. If we never stand up for what is right because of peer pressure, we are actually standing up for what is wrong. If we don't stand up for the truth, then we stand for a lie. There's only two teams. I heard this from a local pastor that I love listening to. There are only two teams, God's team and the devil's team, and the devil owns the fence. So if you're sitting on the fence, you're working for his team. Don't work for the devil's team. Work for God's team. Choose life. I forget the passage. I'll look it up and put it in the description below, but it says, I give you the choice between life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. It's that simple. It really is. We can choose to serve the lie or we can choose to serve the truth. We can choose to serve death or we can choose to serve life. Choose life. Thank you. God bless you.